Hi, I'm Matis Wackernagel with Global Footprint Network. And our assumption is very simple. I think many organizations want that we all are able to thrive on this one planet. But then we say, as long as our decisions are not consistent with that vision, we're not going to get there. How do we know whether we are consistent with that vision? By measuring, we need to figure out if we truly want to thrive on this one planet, how many planets do we have? How many planets do we use? That's what we measure. If we use more than what the planet can regenerate, which is what happens now, according to our accounts, we are essentially running a Ponzi scheme. It means we are using the future to pay for the present. And Ponzi schemes or pyramid schemes, they come to an end very uncomfortably. So what we offer for the transition is solid accounting to help us guide towards where we want to go. So often people ask us, what can we do? What should I do? Our standard answer is to say, sleep enough. Because if you sleep enough, your brain is fresh and can make better decisions. Because building the future we need really depends on good decisions. Because economically, it's the only possible good choice for us. You know, we have one planet. So we say we can have one planet prosperity and the alternative is one planet misery. Which one do you want? One planet prosperity or one planet misery? So what does, how does it apply to my own life? I think about value creation as well. It's all about how do you, pre do you prepare yourself for the future that we can anticipate? Do you want to live in a house that is energy inefficient, that is far away where you depend on cars, uh, where you depend on resource consumption that is not available in the long run? So whether it's you yourself, your city, your company, your country, it's always the same question. Given the future we can anticipate, how do we prepare ourselves to be able to operate in that future? And by doing that, it's like with COVID-19, by preparing yourself for that future, that's the best you also can do for all the others. A very big question is where can we draw inspiration from? And where do I draw inspiration from? I think the key piece is to start to recognize, like with all big transitions, that when you feel you're in the game, rather than just a bystander watching what's happening, everything transforms. Categories like problems versus solutions or hope versus despair disappear. Like with a soccer player, a soccer player in the game, you ask, you say, I'm just going to win. I'm just going to play hard. So if you throw yourself in the game, if you start to recognize, actually, I have skin in the game. This is not just a noble thing to engage with. This is a necessity for me, my community, my city, and my country in order to operate also in the long run, you start to play the game very differently. That's when all the big transition happen. If you think about, I mean, even smoking to take a kind of a not so profound one to start to recognize, wow, that's actually good for me. Anti-slavery, women rights, civil rights, all these things, people start to realize, wow, how can we afford not to do that? How can we afford not to send our children to school? You know, in the old days, people said, we cannot afford to send everybody to school. Now we are at a place where we say, we cannot afford not to send everybody to school. I think that necessity, that understanding, that is not a noble cause, but it's a necessary condition for our own ability to thrive well in the future. That's what I'm taking inspiration from. Thank you so much. It's so great to share this plan with you.